Okay, all done here now. We can head home again. So I have about 17 mile left on the van and I've got about six miles to go to home. So that's good. I always knew this journey would be pushing the van to its limits in the winter when it's cold. The temperature right now is six degrees and it's, yeah, yeah, it's not started to drop cold yet. I sat in it this morning with the heater running um, while it wasn't plugged in, while I was doing some filming. I obviously could have done this video um, when we were potting around the local places and kind of given a false impression, but what I wanted to really do was sort of show you me using the van on its limits. A few more examples of longer days. I've done, you know, a day where I've been to Birmingham, Coventry, Hales Owen, then back home. It, that was no problem at all. I still have plenty, plenty of battery left. Uh, one interesting thing is we're just below a quarter full, and although it's showing 80 miles, um, which doesn't stack up to how full the battery is, it's been showing 80 miles for the last four or five mile. Before that, it actually said 17 miles. So I don't know how the algorithm works for what the mileage that's displayed is. It works because it starts off very optimistic, drops rapidly, and then it kind of gets more pessimistic. But at least you're never kind of worried about not being able to get home. So the way it works, it suits my mindset anyway. It seems intuitive to me and i'm never kind of thinking well that says 30 miles but is it really going to do 30 miles i always know whatever mileage it says when especially at the lower end of the battery i'm always going to make it so that's great <laughs> Okay, so it's the next day and I'm back on my way to Leamington Spa again. So I thought this might make a nice epilogue to the video. Nice word, isn't it? Epilogue. It's actually Friday afternoon. I was planning to have finished work by now um, and be catching up on my paperwork. But I'm having to go back because I was really stupid and walked off with a couple of keys to the couple of the houses on site. No! It was an unusual situation because the house was being worked on but it was still locked up so I went and uh, managed to get some keys off someone to get in there and then forgot to give them back. Naughty boy. So I only charged my van in the cheap hours on our Octobus Go tariff last night. So it's not fully charged. So I'm trying to eke out um, my mileage as best as possible to make sure I can get there and back. Now, because I was just jumping in the van in a hurry, um, I didn't get a picture of it, but basically I was somewhere between three quarters and full. But because it's the afternoon, it's not as cold, so I'm pretty confident I'll be okay. We'll see. So yeah, let's see how we get on. So I'm already well on my way, but uh, as you can see, we're over three quarters still, just about. And I'm in eco, and I've got the heating turned off. Okay, just a sit rep. Um, I'm here at the site, just pulling up at the moment. And I've got here with, uh, well, I'll show you in a second. I've got just under three quarters. Um, 
Now, that also includes me uh, turning on the heating a couple of times just to keep the cabin warm. So that's awesome. Um, so that, I think that's, there's a couple of takeaways from that. The first one is it shows how much the cold kills the battery and how much it can affect your range because it's now a toasty 80 degrees. Um, so yeah, compared to yesterday morning, it's made a huge difference. You can tell by the sound of my voice, even I'm surprised by that. So that's how much difference it's made. Um, I knew it did, but it's quite shocking to see it. Okay, so dropped the keys off, installed the uh, the last charge point, the extra one that they wanted doing as well. They were pretty cool about it, to be fair, and then no mistakes happened, so I didn't get shouted to that. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna head back now. Battery obviously doesn't move, that contrary to what some people believe. You don't lose battery just sitting here parked up, unless you're running your heating and stuff. We'll head back now and see how we get on when we get home. Okay, so I'm just about to pull up at home. Journey was went well. I've done pretty much, I've done, yeah, about 65 mile an hour most of the way back on the M5 and the M6. And I have over a quarter of my battery left. Very good. So I didn't have to detour to pick up Ollie today. So it was just straight to Leamington Spa, straight back. But I'm very, very pleased with that. Sorry if the image is a bit dim, getting to sundown now. It's showing 37 miles at the moment, um, but that's because I've got the heating on and I'm in normal mode rather than eco. So very good, very pleased. I just want to touch on the costs as I promised I would. So, my van, on average, uh, for the three or four months before I got the electric van, on average I was spending around £75 a week on diesel. That gives you an idea of the kind of mileage that I'm doing as well. Now, the electric van, we've got that. Work, if anything, we've fitted more jobs in now because I've employed Ollie, and we have our new guy Stelios as well. Um, so we're actually able to fit more installs in a day. I'm certainly not doing any less miles than when I had my diesel van. If anything, I'm doing more. My average cost now is around £25 a week. So my saving is around, a normal working month is around £200 a month. There's obviously, I don't have to pay servicing either because it's a new van and because it's an electric van. Now, what's the van costing me? Well, uh, at the moment, so I bought the van using a very low interest rate loan and it's costing me over five years around £500 a month. That's not really the true monthly cost of the van because in five years the van won't be worth zero so instead of using that scrub that figure and what i'll actually use is what the lease value would be for the van which is how most businesses would actually um, fund a van like this so you can see there uh, it's a significant saving i'm not necessarily saving money compared with my old van but my old van is old it's not gonna last forever I've done this I've kept it at the moment but I haven't I, it hasn't moved from my driveway since December but it's there as an emergency backup overall my experience in having an electric van and running my business on it is very positive but what bits of advice would I give to anybody thinking of swapping from a petrol or diesel van 
to an electric van? Well, firstly, choose the right van. Get something that's the right size and the right carrying capacity. Treat that aspect of it like you would do, whether it's electric or diesel. See, isn't that better? More pretty. So, um, yeah, other bits of advice. Next, you don't want to go for the van with the most amount of range. I think a few people have said, given this bit of advice when you're looking at vans and cars, you want to be looking, or you want to be looking at vans that have the amount of miles that you need. If your my, like daily mileage is typically 40 miles, like I said earlier on, times it by one and a half, and you need a van with the WLTP of that at least. I would also think about something with a little bit more if you're doing more motorway heavy mileage. So motorways seem to take it out of the van a lot more than they do the cars. Running around town, the vans are pretty efficient. However, motorway miles seem to really take it out of the van a lot more. And I figure that's because it's not the most aerodynamic shape in the world. So at those higher speeds, drag seems to play a much bigger factor because the drag coefficients on vans is much worse than on uh, most cars. So that kind of makes sense. We do a lot of mixed stuff. Um, some of my motorway mileage is on the M6. So that means I'm never really doing much more than 20 mile an hour in rush hour. Sick burn. Take that M6. Uh, any other bits of advice? Entertainment system's fine. I use uh, Apple CarPlay with it and it works fine. Rapid charging is brilliant. Get 100 kilowatts. You see my video on that. It's way more relaxing to drive than a diesel van. It's way more torquey going up steep hills. The torque in the motors is brilliant on this. It's way more nippy pulling out of junctions. It's way smoother. Yeah, what do I wish the van had that it hasn't got? Maybe an even heavier regen for when I'm in city traffic and a sort of hold mode like the Tesla has. So when my foot's off the pedal, it comes to a complete stop. It hasn't got true one pedal driving. I wish it had one pedal driving. Ah, I wish it had an air source heat pump instead of uh, just the normal heater for a little bit extra efficiency. Definitely room in there for it. One of the odd things, um, you can see mirrors, and then I have a rear view mirror up here, just like any other car. When I first got it, I was like, ah, oh, cool, this is like a, when I put it in reverse, it'll show me the reversing camera on it, it'll become a screen. No, it's a mirror. It's a normal rear view mirror. Do you want to see the view from my rear view mirror? That's it, that's the view. So when I come to reverse, because the rear view mirror is there, I normally just look up to it and then see the bulkhead. <laughs> Brilliant. I don't know why that's there. I can only assume it's because they make these on the same production line with the minibus. And so they're just sticking on for the sake of it. It's cheaper to give it you than to emit it out the production process. That's the only thing I can think. Sorry if there's a little bit of rambling in the video, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to give you an insight into the day of a life of an electric van driver doing typical trade type work. Um, if you've got any questions or you want to see any other specific videos on what we do with our van, um, how we use it on a daily basis, maybe anything else to do with what we do on a daily basis to do with our jobs, let us know. Make sure you like and subscribe to get notifications of those future videos plus videos to do with um, electric vehicle charging we're going to have some videos coming on battery storage soon if you're thinking of joining octopus make sure you check out our octopus referral code for 50 pound credit on your octopus account and in the meantime thanks very much for watching